So I saw on Amazon this uh, Moore Audio Shimver Pro product for literally $80. And I had recently uh, gotten the, uh, the Moore Audio Slow Engine did a couple videos here on YouTube about it. It's a pretty cool product, so I thought, hey, what the heck, let me try this uh, reverb and see how it does. So I'd like to share that with you today, and uh, let's run through it. So here we go. Uh, the the Shimverb Pro is a stereo digital delay, so it's got stereo inputs and stereo outputs, and uh, it's got a, got a number of interesting features. The, it's got a bunch of little buttons across the top, so let's run down those real quick. Button to the left is the dry level, so this would be the original level of your guitar or your other instrument. There's a low cut and high cut filters for the reverb, so that's kind of cool. You can make your reverb sound muddy or you can make it sound bright and sharp. There's also a pre-delay option, which is kind of cool. You can add a little pre-delay into the reverb um, for some more interesting effects. There's also a master decay knob that allows you to control the overall decay time of the reverb. And finally, on the right-hand side, this little button or this little knob is for the wet level. So you can control the reverb and the dry level independently. Pretty cool. Um, we have a knob here on the right for the different styles of reverbs. And let me just read them off. There is a room reverb, followed by a hall reverb. There's a church reverb. <laughs> Guess that's the religious reverb. And then there's a plate reverb and finally a spring reverb. So kind of cool. Also, there's a switch that actually controls the, uh, the bypass mode. You can either have true bypass, so um, that would be uh, off, right? So the bottom, I've got it on true bypass now. So that, what that means is if you turn the reverb off, it cuts off immediately. You can switch it to buffered bypass mode, which allows you to retain the reverb trail uh, if you turn the reverb off. There are two switches down here, one for the reverb on-off option, right? So that's your master on-off. And then finally, there is a section called shimmer. So let me just describe that, that briefly. There is a switch to turn it on and off. And so that's controlled kind of by the master, right? So you can see the buttons going on and off there. There's also a knob that controls the pitch of the shimmer. So basically what the shimmer is, it's an additional pitch that the device adds above the original pitch of your tone. And there are a number of options here. You can have the pitch turned off, so it'll just be kind of as if the knob is off. You can set it to one third above, so I believe that's a major third above, a perfect fourth above, a perfect fifth above, a seventh above, and a ninth above. So kind of cool. Lots of different pitch shifting options. There's also an octave switch that allows you to move the whole shebang up one octave. Okay, so there we go. All right, these are the basic features. Let's give it a run through and see what it sounds like. The first thing I'll do, hang on. All right, here we go. First thing I'll do is just play you a clean tone. Pretty straightforward. Uh, this is my Carvin Fat Boy, by the way. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna leave this at the, uh, the room reverb. And let me turn the decay about halfway. And we'll turn the wet all the way off. And I'm just gonna turn the reverb on. You'll see it sounds the same. Let's go ahead and bring the wet level up about halfway. All right, low cut. Let me move that all the way up and you'll hear the lows go away. Kind of pretty sharp sounding, right? Let's turn it all the way the other way. A lot more low end. All right, high cut. Let's cut the highs all the way. Kind of muffled. Not muffled. 
Let's move them about right there. Okay. Pre-delay. Here's pre-delay off. So the reverb happens immediately. Let me turn the pre-delay all the way to max. So you can hear what that does. It delays the beginning of the reverb. So I'll leave it about right there. And then finally the decay. Here it is, shortest decay. Longest decay. Cool. All right, so let's run through the other delay types real quick. So we're going to move from room to hall. So here's room. Here's hall. Not too different, but it's got a little different flavor going. I'm not even sure how to describe it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's a little more controlled. Well, maybe not. A little less controlled. All right, now let's try the church. And we're gonna expect this one to be pretty big, right? So let's check it out. Oh yeah. Yep, and there's quite a tail on that. Let's move to the plate. Now that one is definitely more controlled than the church. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear the uh, that high-end spank? That's definitely a plate. Remind me to tell you on one video the story of a friend of mine who built his own plate reverb in the 1980s. Pretty cool. All right, let's move on. Let's go finally to the spring reverb. Yeah, that sounds springy, doesn't it? I'm thinking Fender. Oh, yeah. Let's do the pre-delay all the way up on this one. All right, there you go. Those are the different types of reverbs. So I'm going to put it back to plate. Nah, let's go church. Yeah, oh yeah, I like the pre-delay on that. All right, on to the shimmer. I'm going to turn it off and engage the shimmer switch. And let's listen. All right. Check that out again. All right, now I'm going to turn it up to a third and listen to this. the third in there. Let's move it. Switch the octave. Kind of funky. Let's try fourth. Try the fifth now. And the seventh.
and the ninth. Actually, I like the seventh the best. All right, that's a brief run through of all the features. What do you think? <laughs> so, the first time I went through this, I was thinking, something's missing. This is a stereo reverb and. I don't know. It sounds mono to me. It sounds really kind of weird. It's mono. So I'm going to add in a ping pong delay from my 11 rack modeling unit. Hang on. And let me play it and see what you think. That's kind of funky and weird, isn't it? Because, and the reason why it is is because the ping-pong delay, the stereo delay, is delaying on the left and right sides, but there's no reverb behind it. Listen. The reverb is only in the middle. Hmm. I don't really like that too much. Let's check out a real stereo reverb with the ping-pong delay. Hold on. And this is the stock reverb from the 11 rack. And just the delay itself. You hear how it's stereo? It's got a wide field, right? A, a wide stereo image. Let's flip back to the Moore. Yep, that's mono. All right, there you have it. A quick run through the device. I like the features. I like what it does. I like the high low cut pre delay. Uh, the shimmer, yeah, it could come in handy in certain instances, but you know what kills the deal for me? It's not a stereo reverb. At least I haven't figured out how to flip it into stereo mode. If anybody uh, here has that, if you're watching this video, you know how to flip it into stereo mode, show me how or, or tell me how in the comments below, please. Anyhow, um, you know, this could be a, a decent reverb unit, possibly with a guitar amp. So if you're, uh, if you're just sticking it on the front end of an amp, you might get some pretty decent results. But if you're like me and you're running a, mo a rack mount modeling unit and you're relying on stereo effects, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't do it for me. Uh, I like the price, the 80 bucks, but I don't like what it does. Hmm, I'm thinking a competitor that starts with an S-T-R-Y-M-D, then uh, you know what I'm talking about. I might have to go get one of those. Anyhow, hopefully this has been of a help to you all. Um, think about it. If you're thinking about this unit, <laughs> think about that before you buy it. Anyhow, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.